Good morning everyone. Today we're going to talk about how we can prepare for power outages. Now DOE released a statement today saying 24-7 power supply, absolutely no expected outage. So most likely there won't be a problem but it's good to be prepared right now the first thing and the most important thing is a USB power bank and if you have one of these make sure it's charged because a lot of people they don't charge it and then when emergency comes they say oh low bat low bat it's not charged so if you're watching this video you have a power bank make sure to plug it in and charge it right now now of course the most obvious use of the power bank is to charge our cell phone but there are other uses also for example we can use it for lighting with basic little USB bulbs like this or like this or even larger ones like this that you can hang around your home now of course lighting is very important not only so you can move around safely but also for security Another thing you want to consider having is a USB rechargeable fan like this. These are very, very useful. If the power goes out, at least you can keep yourself cool. This one can last for many hours on the low setting. And of course, it's USB rechargeable, so we can always use our power bank to keep it going for a very long time. And on the topic of lighting, if you have a flashlight, make sure that the battery is charged because again, this could be a very useful tool. The next one I want to talk about is primarily for those that have a car. If you have a car, it has a battery inside, you can use it to power a USB adapter like this, charge your cell phone. Now eventually you're going to drain the battery so you would have to run it to keep the battery charging. It's not necessarily the most efficient way to charge your gadgets but if there's an emergency and you're lucky enough to have a car, well you can go and get power. And on the same topic, you can use something like this, a DC to AC inverter. Plug this into your cigarette lighter adapter socket in your car and you have a power inverter, a 220 volt AC socket. Now this is not going to power an aircon, it's not going to power a um, stove, like an electric stove. It's really for lower power items like a uh, AC fan, a cell phone charger, laptop charger. Now these cheap inverters are known as modified sine wave. That means the power they put out is not ideal. So for example, if you plug a desk fan into this, you might notice that it makes some noise, that it doesn't spin at full speed or something like that. And eventually it might cause minor damage to your fan. But again, we're talking about emergency situations here. If you have a car, you can plug this in, you can get 220 volts out. It's going to potentially be a lifesaver but more likely it's just going to offer you a convenience of keeping you cool, of keeping your gadgets going and things like that. So yeah, DC to AC inverter. Now how about those who don't have cars but they want an easy 12 volt source of power? Well these jump start kits are absolutely fantastic. Inside are lithium batteries. They can output a very high current because they're designed for jump starting a car. The idea is if the battery's low in your car, you clip these on and then jump start you can actually use these for so many things because what you have right here is a 12 volt raw output from the lithium cells it might be a little bit higher i don't know 13 14 volts it depends on the charge but give or take a stable 12 volt output capable of very high current now you'll see it also has a usb port and it has a output here which can do let's see 12 volts 16 volts 19 volts and it actually comes with a cable let me show you and then it comes with a bunch of adapters so you could potentially use this to charge your laptop you could use it to power a lot of things but here's what most people are going to use it for let's turn this on press the button and then bring in a PLDT Wi-Fi router modem you plug this in there you go you'll see it starting to boot up because if you have a brownout your router will turn off and you won't have internet but in actual fact PLDT or Globe or whoever your provider is, they have a UPS. On their end, there's no problem. It's only on your end. So if you can somehow power your router, power your modem, you can still be online. So that's why I really recommend these power packs because they're great for so many uses, even if you don't have a car. Here's another example. If I plug this adapter in, I've now got a cigarette lighter socket just like uh, automobile like in your car and let's say for example I wanted to run my inverter I could do that I can plug this in right now and you'll see the lights have come on the fan has started and let me plug something in here something that uses AC 220 volts so here's a Philips light bulb that's meant to screw into a regular light socket and if I bring it close you can see that it says 
220 to 240 volts AC 50 60 Hertz so we'll plug it into this little adapter and if we plug it in here we should have light and there you go you can see it's actually kind of blowing out the image but we have AC power coming out here now what I should say is this isn't a huge power pack so it's not going to last for a very very long time but it gives you options and that's what the main thing is here having options especially for powering your cell phone so you can make emergency calls a radio for communications or for listening to news updates it could potentially be used for medical equipment like CPAP or nebulizer so there's really a lot of things you can use these battery packs for and having that multi voltage output is also very useful although usually there's a limit to these maybe it could be 50 watts or 90 watts whereas if you take it from here that's really the raw output from the battery and you can pretty much draw as much as you want but you're going to drain the battery very fast now another thing you can use for your 12 volt gadgets like your router or something similar is this little battery pack here these are quite common and they actually have a bit of a bonus because not only can you use it as a battery pack so for example I'm powering this modem right now but a lot of these can also act as a UPS so I feed 12 volts in here from the wall and as long as the AC is coming into your home it will go direct right simple and then if the AC goes down it will start drawing from the battery so make sure that your router or whatever it is is always powered it could be a nebulizer anything that draws 12 volts a lot of these can act as a UPS so that's the other advantage of these little battery packs and you can also get a special USB cable like this this takes 5 volt USB steps it up to 12 volts for your modem router or other small 12 volt gadgets this cannot manage a lot of power most of these are only rated for a maximum of 10 watts if you're lucky so if we plug this in turn it on you'll see it boots up so that's another option and actually this is a really 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 super useful tool because if you have a power bank you can power something like this now I know what you're thinking well how long is this going to power it for isn't this quite hungry let me show you we're going to run it through my power meter, so let's set this up quickly. Okay, a little bit ugly, but there you go. We are now measuring, let's see, turn this on. And right now it's consuming 2.4 watts. Now bear in mind when you charge your cell phone from a power bank, most of the time it's going to be 5 to 10 watts. This is only consuming, right now it's still fully booting, but 3.2 watts. Now what I've noticed in my testing is if you put a lot of traffic through this, let's say you're streaming a video on YouTube, you might see this go up to 5 watts, 6 watts. So that gives you an idea, but even still, it's pretty minimal power. 3.2 watts, so you could actually power your modem router for a long time just from a power bank. Now if you're really desperate and you don't have a cable like this, 5 volts to 12 volts, you can actually make your own. But this is really a last resort because this will not always work. Basically you take your adapter for the modem and you cut off the barrel jack. You take a USB cable and you cut off the end and basically you just join them together. Now it means you're going to power this with 5 volts and a lot of modems don't like that, but uh, let me show you anyway. We need our USB plug to be nice and short because we are already at a disadvantage by outputting just 5 volts instead of 12. So we take off the outer jacket, expose the two wires inside or it might be four wires depending on your cable if it has data. So we want the red one and the white one or in some cases it might be the red and the black, positive, negative. And then what you would do is snip this and join those wires together. But since I have this little adapter here, I'm not going to damage my cable. I'll just use this adapter, but it's exact same thing. Now I know some people are going to say, well, how do we know which wires go together? Well, on your cable here, you'll usually see that one wire has a marker. For example, this one has a white mark on one of the wires. And there we go. We have a DIY cable. We plug this into our power bank and then connect it to the Wi-Fi router. And you can see it's booting up. Now, like I said, this is really a last 
ditch effort if you have nothing else because they don't like running on this low voltage if too many people connect to this it's going to shut down it's going to crash if the wires in your USB cable are too thin it might not even turn on so yes this will work a lot of the time but it's really not the recommended way of doing it but if you're in an emergency you can make your own cable just get a USB cable snip the end get your power cable that normally plugs into the wall snip the end join positive to positive negative to negative and boom you're going now you might also be wondering how about my home Wi-Fi these LTE Wi-Fi stations in my experience they're a lot more fussy about the power that goes into them if we plug this in you'll see that it will try to boot up but then it just goes crazy it will crash it'll be really unreliable they don't like running on 5 volts but if you have your 5 volt to 12 volts you'll see that it will operate just fine just like it was plugged into the wall it will boot up it will get a signal and you won't have any problems so if possible this is really your better option 5 volt to 12 volt adapter but in a pinch you might be able to get away with this now of course another option is solar panels like this this one has a DC barrel jack so I'd have to put it into some kind of regulator but there are actually panels just like this which come with a 5 volt USB port so literally you just put this out in the sun and then connect your power bank or connect your cell phone I've done a lot of videos about those in the past so I'm not going to go into too much detail because you can check my older videos but solar is an option and even a small panel like this that's enough to charge your cell phone now this next one isn't technically a gadget but I think it's useful to have because it's very cheap you can pick this up for 150 to 200 pesos and well let's just show you it's basically just a little stove I'm sure everyone's seen these but it's very useful to have in your pack because again if the power goes out if you're using an electric stove well you're going to be out of luck if you have gasol or something like that well you're going to be fine now this one actually runs on small butane cans we just put it in here like this turn on the gas and then press the igniter and there you go you have a small stove it's not going to work very fast because it doesn't really consume much gas but if you need to boil some water for drinking wait let me turn this off we do not want to waste it especially during these very difficult times so yeah if you want to boil some water to make sure it's safe to drink or if you need to prepare some food this is an option and it's quite affordable and this next one is a little bit strange and it's so large it doesn't even fit properly in my shop but this is a ceiling fan they come in a variety of sizes and I know what you're thinking well still you have to plug that into a wall so what are you going to do during a power outage well actually we're not going to use this to cool ourselves we're going to use this to generate power because yes these can be used as a generator a really really bad generator but it can be used to generate electricity now I'm not recommending this but if I hold this prongs with my fingers and then turn this even at a low speed ah, there you go point proven you will get an electric shock because this will generate a high voltage electricity I think it's around 60 volts AC so please do not try this at home it's a little bit reckless a little bit dangerous but uh, yeah these generate electricity it's high voltage AC 60 volts so not as high as what's coming out of your wall but enough to give you a shock even if you spin this at a low speed now in an ideal world we'd add some circuitry like a bridge rectifier to really get the most out of this but the average person at home they're not going to know about that so let's keep this very simple we're going to take this and get it into this which is designed for your car a basic 12 volt to 5 volt USB adapter put them together and that's it we're going to start generating electricity so we'll just take a scrap piece of wire and tie that around the prongs that usually plug into the wall now I would recommend that you tape this just to make sure they don't come loose but this is only a quick demonstration so one wire here one wire here and on the other end we have to connect one to the little side legs here this is the I believe that's the negative and then this one which is the positive so again you can connect this however you want you can tape it in place you could use a rubber band it doesn't matter as long as you hold it in and make sure no little hands like children you don't want to let anyone like that near this now you're not going to be charging your high-end tablet with this but uh, you know with enough work you're going to be able to charge some very basic things so let me move the camera into a better position so let me spin this 
see how the light is coming on and I'm only spinning that slowly I'm sorry that this angle isn't the best but I'm trying to get everything on camera and this fan is a little bit large let's make things a little bit easier by removing these arms because actually we don't need these see how if I even turn this slowly the bulb turns on starts to generate power now if you want it to be consistent you have to spin pretty fast what you could technically do is hook this up to a bicycle and then have it spinning nice and fast so that you would have a constant stream of power and then you could power your little USB lights or potentially charge your cell phone if you can spin this fast enough and ideally put it through a bridge rectifier first now I'm not recommending that you plug a brand new iPhone X into this that's probably not a good idea but technically you can use this to charge a power bank to power small USB lights like this and uh, yeah just another option for those that get really desperate so I think that's it for today's video. There's probably more options out there. For example, if you have an e-bike, you could take the motor off that or actually just connect to the wires, turn the wheel and get power like that. There's so many different options. Maybe we can chat more in the comment section down below, share more of those options. I hope you will consider sharing this video. Please be prepared. If you have a power bank, charge it. Flashlight, charge it. USB fan, charge it. They are saying there won't be any power problems and I trust them, but we also have to look after ourselves, so let's do our part also. Thanks for watching.